Good morning and welcome to this week's edition of Encompass Live. I am your host, Krista Porter, here at the Nebraska Library Commission. Uh, Encompass Live is the Commission's weekly webinar series where we cover a variety of topics that may be of interest to libraries. We broadcast the show live every Wednesday morning at 10 a.m. Central Time. But if you are unable to join us on Wednesdays, that's fine. We do record the show every week as we are doing um, right now, today. <laughs> and um, the recording will be available in our show archives for you to watch later at your convenience. And I'll show you at the end of today's show where you can access um, all of our show recordings. Both the live show and the recordings are free and open to anyone to watch. So uh, please do share. Uh, with your friends, family, neighbors, colleagues, anyone you think might be interested in the um, topics we have in Encompass Live. For those of you not from Nebraska, the Nebraska Library Commission is the state agency for libraries. So um, we're similar to your state library. So we provide services and training and resources and grants to all types of libraries in the state. So you will find shows on Encompass Live for all types of libraries, uh, public, academic, K-12, uh, corrections, museums, archives, historical societies, uh, everything and anything. Uh, really, our only criteria is that it's something to do with libraries um, and, and any sort of uh, definition version of a library. Uh, so we do book reviews, interviews, mini training sessions, demos of services and products, all sorts of things. Uh, we bring in guest speakers to Encompass Live sometimes from libraries all across the country, uh, but we also have commission, Nebraska Library Commission staff that do presentations sometimes, and that's what we have this morning. Uh, Joining us today is uh, two commission staff, uh, Sally Snyder. Good morning, Sally. And she is our coordinator of children and young adult library services um, here at the Nebraska Library Commission. And Amy Owen, one of our information services librarian. Good morning, Amy. Um, here as well and they're going to talk about a program we've been doing here at the commission for oh god i don't know how many years a long time <laughs> um our one book for nebraska kids and teens program um, many states or cities have one book for whatever and we have a kids and teens version of that so i'm going to hand it over to you uh, sally and amy to tell us all about our program okay thank you um We'll kind of go with a, a little history first that people may not be aware of how this all got started. It's because we had a one book, one Nebraska program. I'm not sure exactly when that started, but it had been going a couple, three years. And um, then we decided, uh, I'll tell you a little bit more about that. But to get to the web page, you can go to Children and YA right here. And if I can keep it online, and go right over here to one book for kids slash teens. And that gets you to the web page about our program. Um, the One Book One Nebraska, I believe, is run by the Nebraska Center for the Book. So. Yeah. But this is run by the Nebraska Library Commission because in 2000, well, we got started on it in 2007. I met with um, Sharon Osenga, who was then the director of the Meridian Library System, which now we have. That was when we had six systems. Now we have four systems, so we don't have a meridian anymore. But um, those libraries are still covered by the Central Plains Library System. And she, she and I talked about a, a number of ideas that we could get some things going, and this was one of them. And so in 2007, it was our first ever one book for Nebraska kids. And she made the suggestion for the title we used that year. And you can look through here and see some uh, lots of information things, but down here, so that you don't have to scroll all the way through miles and miles of pictures of books. If you want to see what happened in 2007-8, it was Rescue Josh McGuire by Ben Michelson. And so as a book for Nebraska kids, it's usually aimed to about like fourth to sixth grade readers. In general, we all know that kids read at their own level, and so if a kid's in fourth grade, they might be reading higher or lower than this particular book, but we're aiming in general for that age group. And back then, we, we did one book for Nebraska kids in 2007, then we did one book for Nebraska teens in 2008 to 2009, so each book lasted two years. We alternated 
naming new books. Well, eventually we were asked to have both books new every year. And so we ended up doing that in 2013. Oh, do I dare scroll all the way to 12 and 13. Here we go. This was the first year that we had both books new Kid, Aliens on Vacation for Kids and Leviathan for Teens. And um, as, you, as we've scrolled around, you've seen all these active links. We have um, tried for each book to put together some discussion questions, author information. Uh, the number of puzzles varies from year to year because yeah. back then we were creating lots of puzzles. And I know the answers are right here on the page, so don't let <laughs> the kids know where the answers are. Like, they're not going to find it. <laughs> and then some websites that can be of interest as well are all on here. So now I'm going to go, what happens if I hit the back button? Will I go back to the top? Yay! I did want to point out guidelines can be found here. So how do, how do we decide what is going to be a one book for Nebraska kids? Well, these guidelines are pretty general. Yeah. The first one is um, we agree that it should not be a Golden Sower nominee because there are so many books out there and to hook on to something that is already being promoted in another realm, so to speak, is, is wasted time. Yeah. They did say because the team choices are less used, we could, as far as the Golden Sower Committee was concerned, it would be okay for that. But we really tried not to piggyback on that. And for years, the book must be out in paperback. That's just due to purchasing copies for our book club kits, which you'll hear about later. The book fits the suggested age group. And again, a general range. It's either for um, what I call upper elementary to early middle school, four to six, or often the teen book is geared towards high school, but not always, um, because teachers in high school really asked me to do that. They were, they were, they were at that time, there wasn't a golden solo book for high school, they're working towards that now, I understand, so that's great. And then um, also the book has to have some good discussion points. It doesn't have to be controversial. It just is, you know, things about, well, why did you, why did you do that? Or um, hard, hard to have a book discussion if there's nothing to talk about. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, you want people to have different ideas and thoughts and to actually, um, you know, yeah. Now, like you said, not just arguments, or arguments but just things that you can have possibly have a different view about. Yeah. And you could also ask him that can sometimes that's in the discussion questions. If he hadn't found the letter from his cousin, what do you think he would have done next if he didn't know what his cousin told him in the letter? And then they could go off on a whole nother tangent, and, and that's also fun for that. Um, all right, so we'll go back to the main page. But, so if you have any suggestions for adding something or altering these guidelines, um, just let me know. I certainly would consider other possibilities. It's just kind of what's worked for us so far. And um, that's where we all look at. There's no limit to genre or character type or anything like that, very open. That's a good point. We tried, and while we had Rescue Joshua McGuire as the first one, and we tried to bring in different, a lot of diversity in the characters that are represented in the books. Um, we've had The Boy in the Black Suit by Jason Reynolds was an early teen book. Um, we've had, we've had a couple of the April Henry books, so the strong mm -hmm. female character mm -hmm. as the lead. And uh, Joseph Bouchock, <laughs> well, 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 yeah, <laughs> you can find that later, but um, I can't think of the title of the book, which is driving me crazy. So for the current year, we have The Birch Bark House by Louise Erdrich, which is about, um, can you say what their, their tribe is? Oh, um, the Native American. Yeah. I should know. Ojibwe. Thank you. Louise Erdrich is Ojibwe. There it is, right there on the top line. 
And again, we have some information about the author and some activities, some discussion prompts. And our team book was, is, I should say, Not If I Save You First by Allie Carter. And this is a, a survival in the winter in Alaska book, which are always popular. And this has a strong female character, yes, in uh, Maddie. Um, go back up here and click on 2022. The adventures of Bean Boy and Stupid Fast were all of the all of this information is available to anybody. So if you're not um, in, enamored of this year's one book for Nebraska kids or teens, but you see one from a couple of years ago, all the information is still up there. We still, well, early on we, we have um, the books in our book book club kit, but after a while, some of them have been winnowed away, I believe, because of lack of use and bad condition in books. I think that we have most of them though i think okay. and i think because i know we've replaced some copies but yeah we should have kits for most most of them i would have to check but yeah. at least the last five years or so we should have all of them that's yeah, great yeah, yeah we've tried to make sure that whenever there's a new one that we do get um yeah. at least uh kits here for the commission yeah and it's usually a set of 10. Yeah, generally. Yeah. So sometimes somebody will donate some that they had, and we all have those to dispatch in case you need more. And for this year and the upcoming year, the commission has a set, and each of the regional library systems will have their own kit. So there should be plenty to go around. That's great, yes. So with our kit's already booked for the time frame you want. Check with your, your library system and see if theirs is available. That'll help across the state. Yay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, yes. These are ter so terrific. They're such good books. PC Media Gabriel is the teen book, and Arbor Lee is the kids book with good discussions of kids in particular circumstances that end up the last hour of Friday every week. They are in a room by themselves, no teacher, nobody else around for them to interact. And it's just about how they first don't have anything to say to anybody. And over time, this is hard for me, over time, they begin to talk about themselves and talk about that are happening in their lives and, and being supportive of each other. It's a really strong book. But I don't want to go through here and talk. I'm, I, it's danger <laughs> that I would go through and just talk about every book and tell you what's great about it. And there's information right there for each title to give you a general idea of what the, the book is about and, and what might be some good discussion for the guides, because we have a discussion guide for each of the books. Some from the publisher, some from somewhere else, Curious City. That's great. And you'll notice for the activities and puzzles um, throughout the years, a lot of them have been just some printouts that you could hand out, uh, crossword puzzles, word searches, things like that. And the last couple of years, we've been trying to uh, make it a little more active. So if you go back to this year's choice, can you look at those? Yeah. Whoops. No. Oh, good. Yeah. So instead of a, a crossword puzzle, for example, we have um, uh -huh. alphabet. Should I click on alphabet? Yeah. So this is more. This is the game that I found on one of our book club sites that we use a lot for discussion questions and information. And it's just a your group can sit around and you would try to uh, name something from the book for every letter of the alphabet, and that could start a fun discussion. So I went through and did it myself, and I was able to find something for every letter. So I think, okay, you know what I'm going to ask you, what about <laughs> X? 
<laughs> oh, I'm putting on my computer. I can't remember what I had, but I did, I did have something for Advent. Yeah. Well, and I want to just go back quickly and see the, the snowball fight because that's fun too. Yeah, this, this looks like it would be a lot of fun. You can do it two ways. You can use it um, with the discussion questions. You can print or write a discussion question on a piece of paper, ball it up, and uh, you have a snowball fight. You can do it with just blank paper too. I suggested taking it out of the recycling bin and just using it to as a kind of, you know, get your wiggles out, get everyone kind of work out their excess energy and just run around with a snow a paper snowball fight. <laughs> uh, but you could also do it where each paper has a question on it and that whoever ends up with that piece of paper, they use that question to start talking about the book. So either way. But since this book did have um, some winter scenes, I thought a snowball fight might be fun. Uh, we use this one also for the teen book. Not if I save you first, because it's also mm -hmm. set in a snowy area. So mm -hmm. it's new fitting. And who doesn't like a snowball fight? So. Well, particularly when you don't get all wet and right, and tight. right. So, or the headbands game. This one you would have to, um, but if you've ever played the board game headbands, where you have a an image or a word on a card and you strap it to your forehead where you can't see it, and then you ask yes or no questions to determine what you are. So. Um, we have, I think if you scroll down, there are some, some cards to print out oh, yes. okay. with different uh, objects, character settings in the book, and you could ask yes or no questions to determine who or what you are. That's so cool, like taking games that people may have already played, like like board games or things they know, and just kind of translating it into something that can be just used for anything. Yeah. It's something now, they recognize this, already, so I suppose that's easier for some of the kids, especially the younger kids, to, you know, want to do some of these activities. <laughs> well, this doesn't come up very often, but I do have to click on how to make an axe throwing game because, um, <laughs> Maddie is, is able to do that. It's, oh, it's, it's looking. I didn't check that link this week. I hope it still works. There we go. So. Yeah, the, the main character in uh, Not If I Save You First is an expert axe thrower. So I thought that would be fun. <laughs> this is a non dangerous version, there's no sharp <laughs> edges. Yeah. And I, I read through this when you first put it up there and thought, this is great because what you throw it at is a something that you've made out of, um, I can't remember now, cool noodles or something like that, something yeah. soft. <laughs> yeah, something soft, so it just kind of fits there and stays if you throw it right. <laughs> I didn't try it myself. No. I did I did go axe throwing a couple weeks ago, so yeah, it's harder oh. than it looks. <laughs> I believe it. Yeah. There we go. So, so a lot of us, X throwing is a big is a is very popular now for yeah. adults. <laughs> I find it terrifying, but <laughs> that's just me. Yes. Um, another activity you could do with the birth bark house. Um, there is a printable for the indigenous tribes of Nebraska. This book is set in Minnesota or in Michigan, near near Lake really Superior. Um, but we had you know we are on native land ourselves and it might be interesting to see just you know who lived previously or who still lives in your area and that would be an interesting discussion and maybe even um learn more about that history so maybe have a representative come and talk about their traditional ways of life if they're willing to so much absolutely so, thank you So early on, I created lots of the print out and fill, fill in these puzzles. Um, but as I got going, I ran out of time. And so thank you, Amy came through and started helping with, with all of this, which has been terrific. And she's, she's the one who found all of these ideas. So I'm, I'm 
I bow to your expertise and your searching skills and <laughs> talents. This is great. Now we did have down here coming soon. You know, we're going to do that about 1030 and just oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. You've got okay. because we, we have made a selection for the one book for Nebraska kids and teens for 2024 next year. Mm -hmm. We try to do that about the middle of the year, like about now, so that there's time for getting the page up and getting the activities and things mm -hmm. pulled together, which I know this we just decided this a couple of weeks ago. Yeah. So there we go. And the kids, if you're doing it in a school setting or in, in a library, uh, public library where you're working with school age children, um, this gives you time to plan for the upcoming year because it is it's not on a school calendar schedule, it's on a calendar year schedule. So it would be January to December. So mm -hmm. to do half the year with this book and then half the year with next year's book. Oh, yeah. And then find out what the year after that book is going to be. And the books have been chosen by different committees throughout the years. It's never been decided by just one person. Right now, it's decided by two people. Dare I agree with that? <laughs> because um, I used to have a youth um, advisory board made up of children and teen librarians throughout the state who helped give advice on different things. But as time went by, it, this was really before Zoom became the big deal and um, we had a whole new way of meeting. We tried to meet once a year and it was hard and we kind of email out questions and ideas and get the information back, but that all just kind of faded away. So then I had a committee here at, at the commission who considered the books and um, made recommendations. And uh, people's time is tricky to, yeah. here, read five books. I need an answer by next week. That's not yeah. very nice. <laughs> I try not to do that. But, um, so if if anyone out there who's listening has a suggestion for a book that you think would make a good one book for Nebraska kids or teens, please email to me what your idea is. Because they don't have to be brand new books. There's no time frame except that they need to be available to purchase to put in our collection. Mm -hmm. But otherwise, it can be something from 10 years ago that really resonates today for some reason or other. And, and that's well, you know, yeah, the one book for one Nebraska, and some of these ones, they do have more requirements and then like the Golden Sower having, you know, like having to be like Nebraska centric and publish with a certain time. Um, the, these are, we're not as strict with the, this one. No, this is, just what do you think would be interesting for this age group to read and discuss? Yeah. And that's really the only criteria. We just want people to read. So yeah. <laughs> and we want to promote books. So a and variety of yeah, to find older books doesn't yeah, there's there's plenty of there's so much so many books being published. Um there's definitely gonna be ones that we've missed <laughs> over the years. Exactly. I try hard to hear about every single book, and it's not possible. That's just crazy. I do like to sleep at night too. So there you go. Because <laughs> uh, I know you say the same thing, Sally, when you do your um, your children and teen book um, books from the yeah. most recent year sessions, um, and even the, um, the summer reading program book lists. There's wow. gonna be ones that you've missed, and I know when we've done the shows. There's always people that have there's a few titles that get suggested and mentioned that you know it's impossible for one person to have heard about every single um or you know book that's been published uh in a year and we've, talk, we've talked about how we tried to include diversity of mm -hmm. uh, characters and abilities and um this uh, their um history or background but um i've just What's, I said the last time we did this that we hadn't done a graphic novel yet, so there's some things on my on mm. my mind. Um, I just I've been reading a nonfiction book and I realized I haven't had a nonfiction book on there. No, nonfiction is a little trickier to yeah. have a discussion about because you can't say, well, I don't think they did have a war. Well, no. <laughs> I'm pretty sure they did. <laughs> history. So you know, it, maybe nonfiction isn't the right. Um, yeah. 
avenue. We've had some historical fiction. We had the yes. Bathroots book a couple years ago, but, yes. but yeah, he would, would have taken some liberties with some the of the actual, yeah, history, yeah. So yeah, we did historical fiction. But do we, we have nonfiction titles in general in our book club kits, right? Yeah, yes. yeah, that's true. So maybe that's the best place for them. Is, and if someone wants to take them and have a discussion, more power to you and, and let me know how it goes because I'm I'm not, I guess, ready for that <laughs> to figure out how to do that. Yeah, and that's what I didn't realize. We have these book, you know, we're talking about this particular program that we pick a particular title um each year that each kids and teens can focus on and all like if they're talking to their friends they know oh did you read this one it's the one that's been picked but um mm -hmm. you're not restricted to these that we have got so many our book club kids that's just yes. it's just growing like crazy um both adults and teens and kids of all sorts of titles in there so if you're not you've already done these books or wants to try something different um take a look at our website and search for it and find a title you might um a different title you might your teens or kids might want to do yes and we're going to go there to visit that part of our website here in a minute but mm -hmm. it's 10 30. should we make yeah. an announcement I think, yeah i think so i think there's somewhere we can click to find i think if we go to the blog it should be up oh, there let's find out hopefully Come on. i don't know why it's so resistant to me there we go <clears throat> There it is. There it is. Man, let's check out what they are. <laughs> it's thinking about it. Look, there's a graphic novel on there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> How did that happen? <laughs> Parachute Kids is a graphic novel um, based on the author's experiences when. Um, this, in this, I'll tell you about this book first. In this book, the girl in the middle is the youngest and it's from her point of view, and that's why it's for kids. But she, her older brother next to her and the oldest, her sister, her sister's 16. I can't remember how old her brother is. 14, 15. 14, 15. They're in high school together, oh, yeah. so. But um, they come to vacation in the United States with their parents and they're having a great, she wants to go to Disney, Disney World, Ned Disneyland, anyway. And they're from, oh gosh, Taiwan. Taiwan. Well done. But after they get there and after they have a couple of weeks of vacation, dad has to go back to Taiwan because his passport, his visitation is only as on vacation. And he has to go back home, go back to work and make more money. And mom stays with them a little longer. But eventually they have an apartment and it's up to the oldest girl who's 16, like I said, to make sure everything runs smoothly so nobody can under, can tell that their parents aren't there anymore. Both parents had to go back to Taiwan and are working to get another visitor's permit or something. Yeah. Meanwhile, the kids are in the United States going to school and yeah. having issues and they weren't expecting to stay, no. so it's a surprise for everyone, but they're in school and they have a certain amount of money they can spend, but they are trying to keep to themselves and not make waves. And that can be very difficult when you don't know the language very well yeah. or have any kind of support network. So, so many challenges come up. Yeah. And this, interestingly to me, is that this just came out this year, 2023, yeah. in April, March, yeah. April. So it's really new. Right now. But it also it came out in hardback and paperback at the same time. Which is for us. Thank you. <laughs> That's perfect. <laughs> um, the one book for Nebraska teens is Between the Lines by Nikki Grimes. And this is actually a companion book to her Bronx Masquerade that came out a number of years ago. Wow. I should have. Oh. Which I did read a number of years ago. Right down that line. Oh. But this came out 2018. Yeah. So it's, it's a couple of years old, but I think it's still very relevant. So, and and it's about it, it includes verse and prose, and it's about um, working towards um, an event. Yeah, um, it, uh, it's a it's a poetry, poetry. class. Poetry. And they are working towards a slam poetry competition at the end of the semester. 
and it's a group of kids who don't really know each other and are rather suspicious of each other. Yes. And um, yeah, through sure. their poetry and through their writing, they really um, come to get to know each other quite well and, and become their own support network. So there's a lot of things that can happen with this book too, um, as far as poetry and working together and supporting each other. And kids are way into poetry for a group of teens. Yeah, in particular, because a lot people are still having poetry slams themselves mm -hmm. and having good success with participants. So um, I think that's a, a timely book as well. Cool. Okay. Now you will see that it is not yet on the One Book for Nebraska Kids and Teens page. No. Because we have some work to do to pull together information and about it. I wanted to wait until it was announced. <laughs> Get everything loaded. It's only Joe and I am. So. Yeah, and right now, you know, it's still 2023, so you know, we're focusing on making sure they read the 2023 yeah. books this year. But now you know, you can uh, plan for the 2024 uh, titles. Get to thinking about those and how you might use them. Have a discussion or. Um, And what's with, with, over to over to Amy because she is knowledgeable about our um, book club kids and yeah. Um, as we mentioned before, for especially for these uh, four titles this year's and next year's, we will have book club kits available at here both here at the commission and at the each of the regional library systems. Um, if you go to our book club page. You can, um, all of these kits are available to libraries. Um, if you have a book club that is not associated with a library, you would go through your own library because we want to mail it to a librarian, someone that we know just to keep track of it. Um, you can see the rules here. I won't go into that right now, but we have a fairly flexible checkout period. It's not, you know, just so many weeks. You tell us when you want them, when, when you want to hand them out, when you will discuss them and we give you a week on either side of those dates to mail them to and from. Now we will mail them to you and you will pay the postage to send them back to us. If you happen to be in the Lincoln area, you can drop them off here in our office or pick them up here, uh, whatever works for you. Um, but you can see, you can search by author and title if you know those, you can search by genre or keyword, grade level, um, and search by number of kits if you need a certain number of copies. We have kits that vary anywhere from a single copy to more than 20 copies, depending on the book. Um, you can browse our entire collection all at once, fiction, nonfiction. You can just look at Nebraska related books. Uh, we have a special section for the Nebraska 150 books from a few years ago. Oh, yeah. Or, yeah, uh, fiction, nonfiction, holiday, and new editions. Anytime we add something, those will be here. I think right now we only have one book for this current month, but uh, sometimes that list is quite full. Um, for these particular books, I think if you search by grade level, you might have the easiest time. And usually books are have several grade levels associated with them, so I, I kind of go with somewhere in the middle. So. But if you click on there, you'll see all of these nice books with the grade levels, with the grade levels next to them. So there's Bean Boy, there's uh, the 2022 book. The Alcatraz was 2020. Yeah, the Librarians, remember that one? Yeah. Yeah. And you'll see some of these over here. That one was was the one book for in Nebraska 2013. So and some of these were Golden Sower books. We try to get as many of those as we can nominees and winners, some classics. It's always good to have some classics. Mm -hmm. Some graphic novels. Huge selection of books. There, there's mm -hmm. this year's book, Birch Bark House. Um, and anytime someone on our staff does a review, um, we try to post a link to that. Um, Mackenzie Mile is our book club librarian, and they have been doing a book club spotlight reviews on our website and you can see a nice uh, summary and opinion piece on that. 
it's good to have other people's opinions. Yes. Mm -hmm. right, so. And if we don't have a slide, Mackenzie, they're doing that every uh, week in Spotlight. I I was think so. Every week or two weeks, I think. Oh, it might be every two weeks. So. I knew it was on a regular schedule. I wasn't just sure how mm -hmm. often we're doing it. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, pretty, more than we do our Friday, or about the same as our Friday reads. Um, I invited them to join our weekly Friday reads book review group, but they had another idea in mind. So now we have those too, which is great. Yeah. Um, if we don't, if you're pick is not available we do also offer uh read alikes and right now i noticed this morning when i was looking at this i don't have our current books on here the read alikes but um this is these are books that uh mm. if you if you liked you know if you liked this book you know or this genre these these characteristics of this book um here are some other ones that you might try and these are all books that we own so you would be able to use that to make a informed selection of an alternative book so and we will happily help you find another book if you your book is not available so so our our 2023 selections are both um well what do we say yeah they are they are uh, those kids are there. historical mm -hmm. and the uh, more recent one but so when you're looking for a genre, could be looking for historical fiction, or you could be looking for uh, realistic fiction as kind of a way to say modern, who knows, modern adventure. I'm just throwing out what no, it's okay. it's not necessarily enough for that. that. So, sorry, let me get back to the one. Yeah, I think that, um, First Dark House would fall under historical, but we also have um, books that are more of uh, uh, books on certain Native American voices. So this would have yeah. fallen under our Native American voices yeah. category. Um, we have some of Lisa uh, Burgess's other titles. This is her first children's book, and she made it into oh, an entire series. Yeah. Um, but she has she's a very prolific author and has many other books that we have also. Um, so the one I was trying to think of. Oh yes, that is. Uh, I, there it is. There Killer, is. Enemy. Killer of Enemies yes. by Joseph Kuchak. Yeah, oh, so that would be American. American. Yeah. yeah. That wasn't as long ago as I thought. It was. No, no. But that one. Our other, our teen book, I believe. Fell under the adventure survival category. They're mm -hmm. always fun. So if you like Gary Paulson or similar tales of survival, there's Rescue Josh McGuire. Yeah. And not if I say you first. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But yes, again, these are available to all librarians across the state for their book groups. So and and flexible checkout dates. So if we needed it for a class, it would be we could make that work. So and also sometimes adult book discussion groups follow a kids or teen book. Definitely. Okay. Yeah. So, so don't restrict yourself. No, no. <laughs> So what are we forgetting to think about? And, oh, we talked about the books in series. Oh yes, we haven't talked about that. No, we haven't, we haven't about that. So, um, Birch Bark House was part of a series, and if you are looking for the next book in a series and you're not sure what it is, we put together a books in series database. Mm -hmm. And I think it would be. See if I have that set in here. Well, you look low. I just want to remind everyone if anyone else does have any other questions you want to ask um, about, um, yeah. I asked Sally Amy about um, 
the one book from Nebraska Kids, Teens books, this is the program, um, getting titles in there or anything about our book club kits or anything on here, go ahead and get it into the question section um, and they can answer any of your questions while they're here today. I have used our books and series database a number of times when I come across a series and I, I found book three and I like to read book one first. Yeah. <laughs> so, boom, I just go here, switch, yeah. and it's on there, and I can find out what is book one. Uh, and uh, you'll see these, some of these books have these DB numbers uh, after them. Those are uh, part of the talking book and braille service so, um, to show you, because they request by number, usually they such a large catalog. Um, and, I, and I believe that this database came around um, to help talking books because we, when patrons were Quest books in a series, they might not necessarily be automatically coming to them in order, and this way they can tell which books they need to get which books first. first. Yeah, to try to keep them in series order. So, and if you notice that we're missing any series, please let us know. We're always happy to update that. So. Yes, if your favorite series isn't on our list, we need to know that. Yes, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Or your second favorite series. Mm -hmm. I'm always very impressed with this database, and I know you all, Amy, get a lot of comments and, and, and testimonials from people all across the country using it, not just here in Nebraska, the, um, the series database that we have, which I thought, thought that was interesting, surprising that it's not really, apparently not being done anywhere else very well or as well as what we're doing, because we get so many people saying, oh yeah, I use yours. Hey. I, I've seen a couple others, but and sometimes I see conflicting information. Sometimes the author's page don't match the other oh. um, databases. So yeah, it's uh it's always interesting to see how they how they list their series too. So <laughs> we could go to the, the one book. Oh yeah. Um, we have to do that. Mm -hmm. Easiest way to get there. Easiest way. So mm -hmm. I'm on the, center, the Nebraska Center for the Book. Each state has their own center for the book. Um, our center it uh, hosts the One Book, One Nebraska website also. You see our current mystery of Hunting Zen is this year's selection. Uh, but up here in the corner, they have the Kids and Teas page. That's a courtesy to us. Yeah. Agree. yeah. They don't run this program, but they do offer information so they can, you can find us. Mm -hmm. well, that's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. So if you can't find it one way, you can find it in the exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. A lot of the same information. So. But they include other pictures. We wouldn't do that. <laughs> Have them jump to at the bottom, which is good. So yes, this is the current one, and then like we said, we can go. Oh, well, that is like they have the jump right there to all the previous years too. Yeah. Yeah. So that's handy. And these are on our page too, but we also had um, I also put together a a book review sheet for the kids to fill out. It's just a little mini. It could be you could print four to a page, so it'd be just a little mini. Uh, print out, but how they rate that book, and then they can decide if they would recommend it or not. And you get some feedback that way, and it's pretty I like easy. The, the words you put in there that's funny or boring or confusing, these are good words. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. Stupid. It gets that's them to more good. thinking about it a little more critically rather than just saying, oh, it was good. Yeah. I like yeah. it. Why? <laughs> Or the dreaded evil educational. Yeah, so things can be exciting in sure. an educational way. Not if I save you first. Yeah, there's some good yeah. information there really about you know, saving yourself <laughs> in a bad situation. You can copy that page and use it for anything you want to. 
It doesn't have to be on yes, it doesn't have to be that. I'm just taking this and running with it because um, mm -hmm. he made it for me. <laughs> Great. We love to share all of our, all of the things on there. Oh, is that the mini book with you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll just read for the care as well. Um, I don't think we I had I found this also. Um oh, yes. This uh they they created this site specifically to go with the Birch Bark House series and uh, it's different phrases and words oh. used in the book and you can hear how they're pronounced. Oh, that is true. Yeah, I thought this was really cool. So I, I would have to look them up to figure out how to say most words in other languages that I don't speak. So oh, yes. mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to sound it out myself, which is always a mistake. Yeah, because I never write. So yes, yeah, so this is this is a really cool resource if you're reading this book with a group. So. And you can talk about this this source and how you can say the, the word properly yeah. and how often that's mm -hmm. not available to you. Right. Which reminds me of the website where you can find out how authors' names are pronounced. Yeah. <laughs> and John Cheska. Who would ever know how to say that name if they hadn't no, heard him say Cheska like Fresca. <laughs> of course, I don't have that website right now, but yeah, I think we have it. I think we have it somewhere. So this is a handy use of our of our little flags over to the left. The Center for the Nebraska Center for the Book, Nebraska Memories, and Nebraska Access are all quick ways to get to each of those collection of mm -hmm. items. And uh, then you don't have to type it in up, up above or figure out where in the list it belongs going down. Just pop right there. Uh, we do have a question here. Um, someone's curious about, um, you know, we have these book club kits. And we've been doing this program since, as people can see there, since 2007. Um, have you, um, heard from any libraries who have um, done programming with any of our one book for Nebraska kids or teens titles over the years about anything interesting they've done or how it's gone? Yes, we have heard from libraries. Um, for a while, a number of years ago, we had a, a evaluation form or a one page thing that we were asking people to fill out, you know, just saying how many, how many participants did you have and what was your um, discussion like things like that and we had some good general information and uh now it's just an occasional comment that comes via email or along with the books that come back and say, oh this was terrific we are kids the kids really love the book and we had a great discussion or or i couldn't get anybody to say anything i don't think anyone's ever told us that part but no um, <laughs> if that's been the case they don't want to tell us that because they want us to keep having the books but um we have we haven't done a real evaluation for a, quite a while now because um it's just been moving right along oh, yeah. and the books get borrowed sometimes yeah. sometimes there are they are more popular one year than another year um just because it happens to hit something that catches everybody's attention sure sure you never know what's gonna what people are gonna be interested in it's so interesting when we do these the one books for anything yeah <laughs> But I'm glad we have the, the the book club kits now for these at the systems too. That was a specific yes. request from them actually. Um, oh great! That apparently, uh, years ago we used to send them kits for these, and then just same kind. They just kind of fell off doing that, and they specifically requested. They said, "Yeah, we want we need to have these ourselves as well, specifically for the one book for Nebraska kids and teens." So we um, ordered um, the titles for this year and for 2024. Yeah, the new ones um that if they're not here yet they will be soon because the order was placed like within the last couple of weeks literally like <laughs> yeah um so i'm not sure if they've actually physically come in yet or when that will happen but um i haven't seen the parachute kids added yet to our collection so i'm not sure if they have arrived but 
yeah soon, so they're on order so coming soon yeah. <laughs> and then also mm -hmm. the ones for each of the systems um, when the books come in we'll send them off to their the four systems mm -hmm. to them to have both of the 2023 titles and both of the 2024. So I'm looking forward to hearing from li librarians and, and uh, hearing how things went with their discussions of whichever of the titles they're using. Um, mm -hmm. Always willing to get an email saying, here's, here's what our event was or how long it took or whatever. Um, if you're having a book discussion group or you meet once a week for a month or something, however you set it up, whatever works for your community, we'd love to hear about it. So please let us know. Definitely, yeah. Um, let's see, one, uh, I know we just we just announced the 2024 titles, so um, definitely keep an eye out on the website here. I assume like more later in the year or I don't, when do you usually get the 2024 info up on here? Um, the activities not until like like January or is that the? Uh, it'll, it'll be probably in the uh, later in the fall. So, okay. yeah, but before before 2024 starts, yes, okay. but people yeah. yeah, but you know, as of today, what the the titles are, yeah, first yeah, announced for the first time today, uh, Parachute Kids by Betty Tang and Between the Lines, Nikki Grimes. So, start planning for next year. If you want to do it right away this fall and you find other information that, uh, because we haven't gotten ours finished, send us what you oh, find yeah. so yeah. we can share with everybody because your research is just as helpful as, as our research. And we, we'll add another line to the links to the, the activities if you have something that you, we're willing to share. So thank you. Oh, absolutely. Or if you come up with an activity that works for any of the past books or current books, we will have and you think it would be good for everyone, we'd happily share that as well. So like the, the book review sheet that you can use mm -hmm. for any of the titles, but yes. Oh yeah. 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 yeah, you just change the title on that and have it used for any of them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it's great though that you do find activities that are very specific to each book each year too, not just the same thing repeated. Yeah. Um, some can it's great that some can be reused that way because they are perfect for that. But you know, each book is different and needs its own. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Is there anything else you all have, uh, Sally and Amy, on your uh, agenda on your script there? <laughs> I think we hit I mean, have everything we list. So, <laughs> so if, it, if, if we haven't told you something you're dying to know, it's not because it's a secret. It's because <laughs> we didn't think of it. So ask away and we'll happily tell you what we know about it. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. If anybody has any um, last minute desperate questions you want to ask of Amy and Sally, get it into your questions section there. We can ask them. Um, and uh, now, but you can always reach out here at the commission. You all know where we are and how to reach, how to contact us here on the website. So um, you can always ask later if you uh, think of a question at a later time. Um, or if anyone has used any of these kits or used any of these books, you can let us know what your experiences have been with them as well. Yes, and if you have suggestions for making things better, we're happy to hear those too. Yeah, if something didn't work, for you, let us know that and see what we can figure out about making things work better. Yeah, absolutely. All right. I can't see if people are typing, so I always wait to see if anyone's got some long thing they're writing in, but I don't see anything right now. So I think since we are getting close to the top of the hour, um, I can work on my little wrap up and we'll see if any do any other questions do come in. Um, do I need to give you anything back or can you take it away? No, from no, no, no. Um, I will do that from my side. Yeah. So I'm going to pull the center control back to my screen here. Um, <laughs> So here's the session page uh, for today's show, um, and I did while we were while you were talking, I added a link because it wasn't here before because we hadn't announced it yet. But I did add a link to the session now to the announcement 
um, that just uh, went out half an hour ago about the 2024 titles. So you have access to that, and it's just right there on our main as as uh, Sally and Amy showed. It's right there, announced on our blog, um, and that will be pushed out to our other social media and our mailing list too, so everyone knows about that as well. Um, uh, so. For today's show, I'm going to go back to our main Encompass Live page. And uh, if you type Encompass Live into your um, search engine of choice, whatever you like to use, so far it's the only thing on the internet called that. <laughs> so you'll find either our main page or our archive page. Um, here's our upcoming shows for the rest of this month. Um, and I'm working on ones for August, so keep your eyes on the schedule for to see what our August shows will be. Uh, but I want to show you um, right now, here's where our archives will be. Right underneath the upcoming shows is a link to our archive shows. And today's show will be at the top of the list here. It's the most recent ones at the top. Should be up and ready by the end of the day tomorrow at the very latest, as long as uh, GoToWebinar and YouTube cooperate with me. Uh, everyone who attended today's show and registered for today's show will get an email from me letting you know when it's ready. Uh, and we will also put it out on, we have a Facebook page for Encompass Live. So if you like to use Facebook, give us a like over there. Um, here's the uh, reminder about logging into today's show, and we do a little meet the presenters, and then we do, where's last week's? We do announce, here we go, when the recording is available, so you'll see it out there as well. Um, we use the hashtag EncompLive, a little abbreviation for our show name on other social media like Twitter and Instagram, uh, so you can, um, if you are looking for information there as well. Uh, this archive page here, I will um, just give a little uh, more information about this. Uh, this, uh, we um, do have our search feature here. So if you're interested in seeing if we've done a show on a particular topic, um, you can do a search and you can search our full show archives or just the most recent 12 months if you just want something really current. Um, that is because this is our full show archives and I'm not gonna scroll all the way down because as you can see, if you look over here at the bar here, this is a really long page. Um, this is our full show archives going back to when Encompass Live first premiered, which was in January 2009. So that, I think it makes us in 15 years now. Lots, lots of stuff. Mm -hmm. um, and we have all of our shows here. So just uh, pay attention to the original broadcast date of anything. Um, everything has a date when it first went out, was done live. Uh, some of the shows will be great fine and stand the test of time, still be good, valid, useful information, but some things will become old, outdated, information may have changed drastically, resources or services might not exist anymore, links might be broken, uh, people probably don't, might not work at the same place they worked at when they presented for us like 10 years ago possibly, so just pay attention to that date whenever you are watching anything on, on here. But uh, this is something we do as long as we have a place to keep all of our archive shows, which right now they're all on our YouTube channel for the Library Commission. We will do that. It's something librarians do, keep things for historical purposes. Um, and as long as we have a place to keep them, they'll all always be there for you. All right. Uh, we do have a little thank you. Great presentation. Great programming ideas. People saying to you, Sally and Amy. So thank you so much for all the great information about the uh, one book for Nebraska kids and teens program. So I think it was any other questions that came in. So I think we will wrap it up then. Thank you everybody for being here. Thanks, Amy. Thanks, Sally. This was great getting an update on what's uh, the this year's books and, and hearing what next year's books will be. Um, hopefully we'll get lots of people, lots of kids reading and discussing uh, these books great. together. All right. Um, so as I said, this is our upcoming shows. I hope you will join us uh, next week when our topic is a library centennial celebration in photos and memories. Um, our Bay Rate Public Library here in Ralston, Nebraska had their, um, what was it? A centennial celebration for their library in the last year or two. I don't remember the exact year. We'll find out. <laughs> um, and uh, Amy Jellison from the library is going to talk about how they put together this this uh, historical presentation um, for the centennial celebration for the library. So um, if you're interested in that, definitely sign up for that show and any of our upcoming ones we have on the schedule here. As I said, August shows will be filled in, so keep an eye on the schedule to find out what's going to be coming in August, too. Uh, other than that, thank you, everybody, for being here. Thanks, Sally and Amy. Good to see you. Good to see you. And hopefully we'll see some of you at a future episode of Encompass Live. Bye-bye.
Bye.